Welcome back. This is part five and the final part in this series where we're touring Mount Wilson. If you've missed the previous four videos in this series, I'll have a link to the playlist at the end of this video. We will pick up our tour at Deer Park. This used to be the CBS transmitter site compound years ago. The conversation turns to calculating transmitter power, remote controls, and being on call. DC to RF efficiency, so you basically, on a vacuum tube transmitter, it's a little bit more common. You multiply plate volts times plate current times what's called the efficiency factor, which is a number that's less than one. It's always less than one. And the number, that number is supplied by the factory when they do the factory test. So in your factory test data, it'll say, oh, your efficiency at your nominal power is, say, 80%. Okay, which is 0.8, right? Mm -hmm. So you'd multiply your plate voltage times plate current and then times 0 0.80, and that would give you your power output according to the factory readings, according to the factory measurements. This one we don't have to do that with. We don't, we don't bother multiplying plate current times plate voltage. Well, this is a solid state amplifier anyway, but you can see it is measuring the DC to RF efficiency right here at just under 72%. So it's really incredibly good. These transmitters are uh, this message not sponsored by Nautel, <clears throat> but this is a maybe later. This is like <laughs> this is like the this is the best transmitter that is out there. Now I haven't dealt with the Gates Air ones. I'm sure they're fine too. Really, that was a disclaimer. <laughs> but you know, this transmitter is 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 great. It's fantastic. Anyway, so uh, that's where the efficiency comes in. You definitely want to know that. So it's basically giving you your, when it gives you the point A, that's the, the... So here's what you got. You have... Your buffer. Your DC amplifier, you have the amount of voltage times the amount of current it's using. That's the DC power. And then you have the amount of RF power that's going out. And I said in the case, of the example I used earlier, 80%. So 80% of that energy is going out as RF into the antenna. The other 20% is the heat that's generated from the amplifier. All right, so that heat has to be gotten rid of. That's why it has all the blowers in it, pushing it out. In the case of the vacuum tube transmitter, it's got one big blower underneath the tube socket that blows all the heat out. And of course, we have to get the heat out of the room, which we do you know, with the air conditioning. So that's why it's important to know right. what the efficiency is, because you have to deal with the heat that's generated. Right. Now, it'd be ideal if the efficiency were 1.0, there would be no heat, but that doesn't work that way in real life, so. They have a nice, I mean, it's a nice, easy to read GUI. Yeah, I mean, it's good. It's really flash based. Really, the thing about not to, the difference, uh, I mean, not, not telling Gates, I mean, the only difference really is like the footprint is just different. Yeah. You know, the Gates is a little taller. That's really right. about it. They give you a, they give you a, like a commissioning process. You go through it and you go, oh, it's on. And, hey, there we go. It's working now. You know, see me again in 20 years and I'll replace you now, you know. So yeah, five years old now. It's just like when we put it in. This is neat because this used to be the, this room used to be the uh, like uplink for the, the controller for the satellite uplink they had up here. So CBS TV had a satellite uplink up here and they had a 50 kilowatt generator, which is still out there, and a 50 kilowatt ATS, which is right around the corner. And it just turns out that would just fit what we needed. <laughs> Barely, but it does fit. Yeah. Um, so we just repurposed the whole thing and just took over the site. And we were talking about remote control earlier. So this is the, the, the UI we have for this particular site. You know, so we get on our computer, our PCs back in the office or on Chrome rem remote desktop, we That's see the same thing and yeah. kind of blow it up a little bit, start pressing the buttons and so forth on it. So that way we don't have to be here, we don't have to be in the office to, to do any of it. That's kind of how it has to be now. That's right. And for you guys, it's better coming up and down this mountain all the time. It's better to not have to. You don't have to. It's got mainly to do with speed. It's like, oh, the station's off the air, boom. I got a, yeah. I got back on in less than one minute or whatever. I'm the one who gets the phone calls. My phone is the first one that rings and the stations go off. So I'm the one who gets woken up in the middle of the night. Unless Matt and I change our numbers around, but I'm the one that's first right now. So I did that, so you know, I've, I've been doing it for a long time, so. We keep a very close track of what's going on and, and, and uh, if something happens at the other site, I, I learn about it very soon and put this one. Usually we just put this one on and ask questions later, pretty much just like we did in New York. 
put this one on and go. <sighs> okay, what's wrong up the hill? Oh, blah, blah, blah. Okay, great. Well, you, you know, a lot of revenue, New York and LA. Yeah. You know, you guys are the guardians of revenue, if you think about it. Yeah, between the two markets, it's about 25% of the radio revenue in the company. We move outside and look at the tower at Deer Park. This site has been repurposed from its original design. So there used to be a bat wing, a Channel 2 bat wing on this tower. You know, you know what that is? You know what a bat wing yeah. is probably, right? There's a couple down the street still. Yeah. Anyway, so they took it off and they did a mechanical study on this tower with the antenna we specified, which is that eight bay super high power up there. And they said, oh, this tower is not strong enough. Well, anyway, so they had to modify the tower a little bit. They added those guy lines, as I recall. Actually, you know what? Those might have been there. No, I think those were there. They added some extra cross members to the tower. It's a little hard to tell from here which ones they added, but they added some near the top. And, and the pylon was brand new also. So the pylon and the antenna were part of the same project. So, and that one antenna handles all, all the, uh, all four. So between 92.3 and 104.3. So the ones on the side here, those are antennas too? The ones that are just below it, um, at the top, that's actually the antenna for 93.1. The skinny ones. Yeah, those are two-way antennas. I'm not sure, I think a couple of those are still active. There used to be a, a big two-way conglomerate here, and they moved out just recently. I don't know if they took all their antennas down or not. Are these hollow? Uh, the transmission lines are hollow, yes. Okay. But you couldn't run an endoscope through it, because it's got a spiral piece of nylon in there to keep the, to keep the well, to support it as to part of the as part of the yeah. structure. Okay. Now, uh, I suppose if you're using a waveguide, a big TV waveguide, you could, I suppose you could do that, but we don't do that. So one more stop inside to the sunroom, where some more microwave antennas are located. Open. So this is what we call the sunroom. <laughs> and we have two more 950 antennas looking back at Burbank. So we divide the power on each of these. One, one is for horizontal, one for vertical, obviously. We have uh, an 18 gigahertz radio that points back at the post office. So all the message traffic, all the IP traffic comes down over this, although this is a 5.8 unlicensed, which we can go to if this one craps out, which it has once. So that's how we get our communication link going between the two sites. So remember I was, oh, okay. yeah, I remember I was saying all the, mm -hmm. the copy and paste aspect. Yeah. Well, the paste is done through this. Got it, okay. Anyway, so there you go, Deer Park. Uh, Occasional. Formerly known as 123 CBS Lane. And that concludes our tour of Mount Wilson. For those of you who have been on this five part journey with me, thanks for following along. Those of you who have just jumped in, well, start from the beginning and enjoy. This video was made in conjunction with the Society of Broadcast Engineers Los Angeles Chapter 47 as part of a pilot training program for the Certified Radio Operator Certification. If you would like more information about the Society of Broadcast Engineers or the Certified Radio Operator Program or any of their other certification programs, like I've done the Certified Radio Broadcast Engineer, Certified Radio Networking Engineer, and I've done a few others in the past as well, visit the links I've put in the description below. Thank you to Doug and Maria for allowing me to tag along on this tour, and thank you, yes you, for being here and watching. So, until next time, stay safe, stay healthy, and we'll see you in the next video.